Welcome back to the lecture on sequence consensus and multi paxos. We have seen the basic algorithms. We have also looked to the um, how to prove the correctness of this algorithm. And now we're going to embark on a series of optimizations to get practical algorithms. So we are looking to the issue of performance. At this point, the algorithm is not very efficient because the proposals are not pipelined. Every proposal actually requires two round trips. If you look to the different message being sent, so the entire sequences are sent back and forth. And the sequence at the acceptors and at the proposals and at the decided sequence are mostly redundant. So now we will uh, add optimization to fix this. Okay, so here we are. And the optimization we are going to address are all correctness preserving transformations. So we know that the algorithm is correct and every transformation we're going to do will render a correct algorithm. And each optimization will be described as follows. We will describe what is the optimization we'd like to do, the proposed chains, changes, and correctness arguments for that. So in this unit, we are going to talk mainly about one single optimization, which is called prepare once and pipeline accept. So what we can observe is that the algorithm could be optimized for the case when a single proposer runs for longer time. And as long as this proposer is not aborted, we can do something. But if it is aborted, we would like to still guarantee safety of the algorithm. And here is an outline of the solution. I said again, the multipaxis is inefficient as it is now we have multiple with multiple concurrent uh, proposers conflict and restarts are likely to arise this will create loads and uh, abort and back off again and then you start again so that will take time and also each proposer has these two rounds of messages for each chosen value each decided value we will have a prepare phase and an accept phase. So the solution we're going to see is that we try most of the time to have one proposer. That is a just best effort. So most of the time, one proposer will act as a leader, actually. So one leader. And that proposer after first prepare only perform accepts until aborted that's why we are calling this solution prepare once pipeline accept so the idea can you see here a proposer that acts as a leader will do a prepare he will get a promise he will issue multiple accepts and get multiple accepted messages and decide. So that is what we are going to see. So the benefits here is the following. The proposer does prepare before the first accept. After that, we have only one round trip to decide on any extension of our sequence, as long as a round is not aborted. It's written here. And that will allow multiple outstanding accept requests, as you can see here. That is a multiple outstanding accept requests. And will basically, we will have a lower proposed to decide latency for multiple proposals. So this is the time to, from propose until a decision happens. So lower proposed to decide latency. For multiple proposals. I guess now we can look to this algorithm in detail. So 
So what happens is that after first prepare, we allow issuing and accepting multiple proposals in round N. So now we have a situation where we are actually allowing multiple proposals in a single round. Okay. As I said here, so we have multiple proposals issued in the same round. So we have to address this issue. What does it mean to have multiple proposals issued in the same round? Second thing we have to think about is acceptors then will accept longer sequences in the same round. To the acceptors behavior, I am around N or round five, I'm getting multiple proposal, multiple sequences in this round, I will accept the longest one of these. As long as the number N is greater or equal the promise of the acceptors. So a proposal issues multiple proposals in round N. Observe now we are talking about a proposal behavior. So proposal issues multiple proposals in round N. That's what it does. The only thing that the proposer guarantees is basically that the sequence V2 is longer than the sequence V1, and V3 is longer than V2. So that is what it guarantees. More importantly, it does not wait for one proposal to be chosen before the next is issued. I think that is quite fine. And it will continue behaving this way until it is aborted. Okay. So this is how the proposal behavior at a high level. Hmm? So this is the description of how the proposal behaves at a high level. So let us now try to understand now this. We have to actually change our notion of a chosen sequence. Remember, a chosen sequence? So a chosen sequence at round n. We go back and look to the what we call the Bout array, which is the state of the acceptors. And we will say that a sequence V is chosen in round n if acceptors in a majority set have accepted in this round sequences that having V as a prefix. So now we have, if you look here, this is round five, we have uh, multiple proposals. Initially, maybe uh, acceptor Q1 to Q3 has accepted this sequence, C2, C3, and then acceptor Q1 has accepted a longer sequence here with C1. The same happens at um, acceptor Q3. And even acceptor Q3 has accepted even a longer sequence here. But at this state, what is the chosen sequence? It is a sequence that has been accepted by a majority. So at this point, actually, this sequence, the sequence C2, C3, and C1 has been accepted by a majority. The majority is Q1 and Q3. So that is our chosen sequence. The notion of a chosen sequence in a single round becomes very important when we are dealing with this algorithm. So the sequence C2, C3, C1, and all its prefixes are chosen in round five. So let us look to the acceptor behavior now at round n. So what do we mean by this? We are actually looking to what happens when an acceptor in this thing Q receives an accept message. So first we order proposals in the following way. So now the, the order of a proposal is not only based on the round number, but also on the length of the sequence. So um, one proposer, like this one, n prime comma v prime is longer than n v if either n is less than n prime, or in the case they are the same, then v prime is a longer sequence than v. The acceptor basically extends its accepted sequence when it receives a new proposal. This is, of course, 
as long as it is a higher proposal according to the above ordering here. So, so one thing we are going now to have is basically uh, the acceptor will accept longer sequences and it will send an accepted message. And now we are going in the accepted message to include accepted sequences. So accepted message now not only includes uh, the number n, but it will include the, the sequence accepted by an acceptor. So here is the behavior of um, an acceptor. It gets an, an accept sequence v at round n. If n is greater than the promise, we update the promise. We compare our sequence with the current sequence accepted by the acceptor, and we pick the max out of that. And then we send to the proposer this sequence, the accepted sequence, and n. Now we are going to go further and look at the proposer's behavior. The proposer behavior when it receives an accepted message. So the proposer maintains an array, alpha. So alpha q will be the length of the longest sequence accepted by acceptor q. So now we are at the proposer. The proposer really wants to decide on a chosen sequence. So the basic idea is that store the sequences received from the acceptors to decide which sequence is chosen. And once it found a newer sequence or a longer sequence that is chosen, it will basically decide on it. So to do this, we do the following. We say the following, a sequence V is supported if a majority of, a, in a majority of acceptors Q, this alpha Q is greater than or equal to V. So this is a state of the proposer. It has received sequences from the acceptors. And it has stored in this vector the length of each sequence that it has received from an acceptor. So if in a majority of acceptors we have this situation, that then that sequence is actually its chosen sequence then. And if a sequence is, is supported, then it is chosen. And more importantly, if V is longer than any previous sequence, then this is a new sequence that we can decide upon. And so V will be decided and learners should be notified. So this is the basic idea. So let us look now to the proposal behavior on accepted, how to, how to do this. So we maintain uh, at each proposer lambda c, Lambda C will be the length of the longest sequence that the proposer P knows it's chosen. Initially, it is empty sequence that is chosen. What is the behavior of uh, a proposer when it gets an accepted message? First, it maintains the length of the maximum sequence it received from Q, which is by comparing what it has already got from Q with the length of the sequence it has just that Q has accepted. Very good. And then it compares the length of V with the length of the length, the longest sequence it has already known it is chosen. If V is longer and V is supported, and we understand what is supported here means, means that V is chosen, as we said before, then we update the length of the longest sequence that is chosen and then we send a decide message to all learners. Okay. So that is the behavior of the proposer. So now let us look to the behavior of a proposer when it becomes a leader, when it's first time. So here is the behavior of the proposer initially for the first accept 
when it gets a proposal, picks a unique number, which is higher. It has the majority set. It has now this array of lengths of accepted sequence. The length of the chosen sequence initially is zero. It's sent prepared to all acceptors as usual. The promise is as usual. The promise, it gets a promise from the acceptors. It adds the promises to S. And if it adds enough promises, then it can pick. It knows that um, now we can choose a sequence to be chosen. We take, we pick the, the maximum one of these. And it will extend that sequence if, it, if the command is not already in the sequence. And it will send accept to all acceptors. That is the basic behavior. So again, at this point, it, the proposal is in sync with the majority of all acceptors. So this is the behavior the first time. First accept. Later accepts or further accepts will just be very simple. If you get a proposal, you just see if it's already in, in the sequence that it knows, its current sequence. If not, extends the sequence and it sends an accept message to all acceptors. So this is basically all the optimization that we have to do now to implement the prepare once pipeline accepts. Okay. Uh, so, and that is, here is a code for the whole thing until now. We have added this code, skip the prepare phase. We modified the response to an accepted message. And we modified the response of the replica or the you can say the the acceptors huh? so that now it uh, compares sequences and remember now that we send the accepted sequence to the proposer okay let us look now to the correctness of this optimization prepare once pipeline accepts correctness is quite easy what is it we have that is the we have to guarantee the following if a proposer is chosen, then every higher proposer that is chosen is a longer proposer. We have two cases. The case when we are proposing with the same leader, the same proposer in the same round, we can observe that only successively longer sequences can become chosen within the same round, since acceptor only accept growing sequences. If n is less than n prime, the prepare phase guarantees that all chosen sequence around n will be adopted first. So in this case, the acceptors and the proposer are in sync. And no new sequence can be chosen in round n after that. So because now we have done a promise to not to accept anything less than n prime. So what we have achieved. So at this point, we can pipeline proposals from each proposer until aborted. Only first proposal requires two rounds. Once a proposal becomes a leader, later it, it only takes single round for each proposer. What remains in this is that, as we can see still, we have entire sequences that are sent back and forth. And the sequence at the proposer, the sequence at the acceptor, and the decided sequence are mostly redundant. They contain more or less the same information. And we are going to fix these optimizations in the next unit. Once we have that, we have a completely efficient algorithm for uh, multi-paxos. Thank you.